Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, midweek Wednesday. Hope everything's going well for you today. Um, we have a few things to talk about. I, I, I'm in the mood for a mosh again. We got a, a couple things that I want to cover. A couple questions that I wanted to questions <laughs> that I wanted to answer. So what do you say we get right to it? Okay, for today's first project here, we um, this is a beautiful scraper. Now, I bought this specifically to work on that cedar chest I found that we're going to be doing with my my girlfriend. But let me show you something about this uh, this beautiful vintage scraper. Scrapers were big years ago. Scraping is much preferred to sanding. It's easier, leaves a better finish, a smoother finish. And, uh, you know, scraping is what you use to take off old finishes. And it's funny because we're going to have to use a scraping method to clean this varnish. You can see this is typical varnish failing. What happens, it starts to crack and then it flakes off. That's a typical varnish failure. But we're going to be scraping that off. And uh, let me show you how this works and the beauty of it. Now, this particular scraper has a big, heavy cast metal top up here. And it loosens that squeaking kind of a, but you can adjust it all different ways for drag scraping or different ways. And I'm going to go through how, how, how important it is to get the angle correct on the surface of the work you're working on in a little while. But first, let's get this into usable shape. I'm not going to restore it and make it pristine because I want to use this. So I want to show you how we're going to make it into a, you know, bring it back to the, its original glory. This is an extremely simple tool to uh, disassemble and take apart. And all it is, it's a, uh, you can see here, it's a handle with a uh, threaded, here you can see here how this comes apart. That's your little ball over there that allows you to adjust it. Here's your blade, okay, your blade. And inside here you have a little ball nut. You can see that little ball nut? That's all it is. It's a, uh, a threaded ball. And there's a captive hole in here where that goes. And so there's very few pieces to it. You can see that's it. And there's your handle, and uh, this is going to be a fun, quick restoration. Now, we have some time to work on this, so the first thing I'm going to do is take a, uh, this is a soft brass brush, and we're just going to scrape what you see here. We're just getting off some of the surface rust, and again, we're not going near the edge. We're just getting rid of some of the surface rust, and then we're going to dump this in some evapor rust, uh, because like I said, we got time, so that's what we're going to do. Now I took this over to the wire brush, cleaned the threads, the ferrule, and uh, we took this here, this um, uh, round tubular brush, ran it through here with the drill press, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of three-in-one, okay, because uh, now I'm sure there's still a little bit of residual dirt in there. This is always a fun part. Take some three-in-one on a Q-tip, and then we're going to go around the threads here inside, you see that? You're always going to get that little bit of dirt, but that'll stop that squeaking that we had, annoying squeaking. But it's important that, you know, when you're dealing with this, always take the time, clean out your threads, make sure your threads are nice and clean, and make sure your bolt is nice and clean. Now, this has a split ferrule, but you don't see it because uh, it's mostly decorative and it's under there. It's underneath uh, the cap that you don't really see. Now, we want to keep the original paint on here, so we're just going to wipe this down, take off any rust, wipe it down. And uh, this one here, same thing. We want to keep the original paint on here because we want to make it a nice user. Here we removed all the rust from that area of the chipping paint. We'll just, like I said, we'll just touch that up. That's probably Japaning on there. And we did all the same with this and this. And we'll wipe it down with some mineral spirits before we, we hit it with the uh, a little bit of touch-up on there. Now we're going to work on our handle. Now, although scrapers normally have a thick blade with a burr on it and a very sharp edge, I like to use a single edge blade to uh, to do my scraping because I, I just, I've been doing it for a long time and I uh, I have a good feel for it. I get my, my hand here and I can drag it across the grain. Remember, the grain is going up and down and you could either pull it this way like this with two fingers behind it giving uh, giving stability to the blade, or you could push it down. You have to see, if you're pushing it down and you see it's starting to grab, because, you know, the grain goes like this, if you're starting to grab the tips of the grain, then you've got to pull it. See, pulling it, I can feel, uh, isn't as smooth as when I push it. So I'm going to push it all the way down here and scrape off uh, the majority of this varnish. Okay, 
Okay, here we go. That was all of uh, six minutes to get all this varnish. That's all the varnish that was on there. You could see here we took it down. Now we're going to run it through the belt sander just real quick to get some of the. But you could actually go right over this. Now let me show you something that's pretty interesting. This is the ferrule that was on here, and uh, you could see that at one time this this uh, scraper was exposed to some moisture, which made the wood swell. And when it swelled, it had enough force that it snapped the ferrule. You see that? The ferrule was like this originally, it was closed, but now you could see the wood has swollen enough that you couldn't even get this back on here and close it, you see, because you see how much that wood is swollen through the years or whatever, or whatever the case may be. So this one here is, you know, you have to decide what you want to do with this, but uh, you can see here how the power of swelling wood. Now, like I said, we're going to run this through the sand. I want to show you something pretty interesting on how to get inside this little embellishment, these two little lines. Now, one easy way I've found to get into these embellishment lines, these little lines, these grooves that are in the handle is to use the edge of your belt sanding belt. Now, you gotta be very careful. The edge is very sharp. And also, you gotta be careful that you don't slip because this will put a groove or a line where you don't want it to be. But if you gently rotate the handle against the edge of the spinning belt, you'll see it does a fantastic job at cleaning up all that varnish and gunk that's in those lines. And uh, and this way, when you sand it down again flat, you could see that it will come out nice and you can put your new varnish in there. Also, very important, if you're going to use any time the belt sander, you've got to have a belt sander cleaner and do this at least five or six times during your operation. Okay, here's where we're at. You could see here we have this down sanded nicely, right? Looks beautiful. It'll look nice. What happens is the varnish or whatever you put on here will make the grain and the, the uh, actual undertone pop. Now, you could stain it if you want a darker handle. Notice the little pin here. See that pin? That's important because, remember, you're pulling on this as a scraper, so they had to pin this in so that this doesn't pull out. Now... Uh, what I do is because I'm going to use varnish today. Like I said, we have a lot of time. I'm doing this video a couple days in advance, so we have some time. Normally, I like shellac because it dries in 25, 30 minutes to the touch, and in an hour you could recoat it. This where this takes you know minimum six to eight hours if there's low humidity to dry. And I'm going to show you the way I do it. It says do not thin out varnish, and that's absolutely not what I do. I always thin out varnish, especially the first coat, because I want the first coat to really suck in there and uh, let the grain absorb that varnish, and it'll be very strong. Now, uh, what I do first of all is I just drill a hole into a piece of scrap wood, and I will screw this in to the wood. See here? That's a weird thread, by the way. It's 516 something. It's not 24. Maybe 32, I don't know, but it's a weird thread. Anyway, so screw that in to the wood, see? Now, when you varnish it or whatever, you could let that stand up on the furnace or whatever and uh, and let it dry because it's got to take its time to dry and you can't be touching it like, like shellac. So let me show you how we're going to apply Now, my favorite varnish is Minwax. I know a lot of places don't have it, but it's spar urethane. It's a uh, Helmsman. It's an indoor-outdoor. It's got UV. It's the whole thing. It's really a good... They, it went up in crazy in price, but it's great stuff, and, and you don't use a lot of it because you, you thin it out, and you put it on it, and a couple coats, but let me show you how quick it is to apply, and that's why you see why I like it, but it takes time to dry. Okay, I'm going to show you this in real time. First thing we do is we drench a small swatch of cloth here, okay, something like this, uh, inside of a white sock works good too. You're going to drench this with mineral spirits okay mineral spirits now that you have this drenched with mineral spirits okay and when i say drenched you could see here it's now what you're going to do this is for the first coat only because remember this wood is old it's dry now you're going to dip it into the varnish like this okay it's a little messy but you're just going to wipe it on now what's going to happen is that mineral spirits is going to dilute the varnish and you're going to rub this into the grain into the wood all the way around and uh and then what it's going to do is it's going to absorb into the wood and it's going to suck it in okay now you got to make sure you don't have enough you're always going to kind of wipe it off a little bit and then let that dry and uh, i'll show you what it looks like when this is dry but you see 
like I said, that the, we just diluted it by putting mineral spirits on this. Now, the next time we do this, we're going to put less mineral spirits. But right now, it's so thin that it's absorbing into all that grain of the wood. Now, while that's drying, for the next couple coats, you're going to just take a, a... This is how I like to get the varnish out of there without dripping down the can. That's all you're going to need. And then just put that into a clean jar, okay? You see how much we have in there? That's pure varnish. Now we're going to thin that out. We're going to thin that out with some mineral spirits, okay? And when I say thin it out... Um, I'm just putting a little bit here. You see that? And that's really thin now. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to let that sit. This is going to be for when we use it for uh, tomorrow. But you see how thin that is? Now what you're going to do is it dries so quick because you're putting it on in such thin coats that it dries so quick that you can put multiple layers on, which really gives you a nice look. I'll show you what that looks like tomorrow. Okay, see, now it's only been on there for maybe 10 minutes tops it's already almost dry to the touch because you see it's sucking in that's old dry wood and it's going to absorb that moist that varnish right into there so let that sit we have the other parts touched up let this sit and we'll come back in about six hours and we'll give it another light coat and another it dries so fast another light coat it but it's going to take about three or four coats to build it up this way okay now it's been six hours you could see here it's it's dry to the touch here and if you feel it it's almost smooth, but not. You have to have this smooth before you put the next coat on. Now, if you notice the end grain down here, you'll see it's not as shiny, nor will it be up here because the end grain sucks it more into the into the grain. So this is just where we want to be. Now, what you're going to do is take some quad-o steel wool or three-o steel wool and lightly go over it and just take off any. It's got to feel smooth, just like that. Over here, it just feels a little bit rough, like you have, you know, like rough paper. But this feels nice and smooth. You want to have this whole piece to be nice and smooth, and then we'll start on our second coat. Let me just get it smooth. Okay, now it's all smooth like a baby's bottom, but it's also, it might seem a little dull in some areas. Don't worry, that's that's what you want. You're going to add another coat. Now we're going to put our second coat on. What we're going to do is, again, we're going to dampen this with mineral spirits, but just so it's there's nothing that could come out of it. It's just going to be dampened with mineral spirits, and then we're going to use this straight out of the jar. We already thinned this down a little bit and wipe it down real quick. Now, the reason we dampen this with the mineral spirits is because if you take a dry rag and you put it into varnish, what happens is it'll absorb the sp mineral spirits, the thinner from the varnish, making it a little bit more difficult to work with. So now what we're doing is we're just going to submerge this in here. You see that? We just dampened it with varnish and we're just gonna wipe it down like this, okay? Look how easy this is. One, two, three, this whole thing will be done, and then back again onto the, over the furnace. You see how the second coat now looks a little bit different than the first one? It goes on super easy. They're gonna go on easier and easier after you do it for the simple reason that now it's not gonna be drawn as much in because the suction has been stopped already by the previous coat. So now you're just putting a thin coat on, and, uh, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Okay, it's the next day. This is a total of three coats. Okay, again, you could see on there thin, no drips. You could still see the grain under there. We could go four or five, whatever you want. Now, uh, this is extremely, this is a high gloss, and we could take that down by using steel wool. I'll show you later on to get it to that uh, natural look, but there we go. You can see what a beautiful finish varnish is. You can see the color brought it back to that rich, deep, beautiful color. But now what we have to do is we have to work on the ferrule. And a ferrule is very important. It's not just for looks. A ferrule, oh, excuse me on that. A ferrule, see it threads itself in there when you do it in wood. Uh, what a ferrule will do is a ferrule will hold the grain because, you know, grain has a tendency to split out. So by putting a ferrule or cap on it, when you're pulling and doing that scraping motion, it won't split out this wood. So it's more than just decorative on this type of tool. So since the other one, we have the brass one split, we're going to see what we have around here to put on. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this antique scraper looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. You can see here what we did. We And this one takes a while to do it, you know, to get it back and kind of, this is a real restoration more or less. And 
You can see what we did here with the handle. I dulled it out a little bit. This is the way I like it personally, but you could dull it down as much as you want. I also gave it a coat of butcher's wax afterwards, so it's there's no slip to it. It's, it's a very grippy feel. And look at that grain, just beautiful, huh? Nice finish on there. Uh, I did the blade over, cleaned it up, and let me see if, there we go cleaned it up and uh, actually shellacked the blade so it won't rust anymore. This has a four position. I'll go into the workings on this when we talk about scrapers. Um, I did the ferrule using a piece of copper pipe. And what I did is I, uh, I cut off a small band and I pressed it onto the end of the handle. And I actually used a little JB weld to make sure that it won't spin well, because like I said, that is a very important part of the handle for strength. Um, as far as the Japaning, I kept the original Japaning and just touched up the bare spots, as you could see, all around it. So that's all original Japaning, which is the touching up of the, the flaking parts that uh, flaked off. So there we go. We have our vintage antique scraper. And uh, you can see how this works. You just give it a half a twist, and this will swivel up and down. And then you give it a tightening up like that, and it'll lock it in for your scraping. But like I said, we'll talk about that when we talk about scrapers. So there we go. That one's in the can. This was a fun project and one that will be used. This, these are excellent tools for using. Okay, so in closing, we had to actually uh, delete some of the other stuff I had today. I had a little bit of a mosh, and uh, I'll put it in the next episode. But I uh, wanted to uh, talk a lot about in detail about how we do that varnish and all the other parts of that scraper. And I'll show you how the scrapers work. We're going to do a scraper tutorial. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.